Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm going to tell you about my thinking and planning around this Vasily Kandinsky inspired soap. And I think it might be useful to you in that you can kind of just relax and not worry about color theory so much because Vasily Kandinsky believed that color was a way of expressing yourself, feelings and your spirituality. So this is more of a kind of gut level use of, use of color. And one of the things that he did, I can translate to you to make you feel like, oh, I can do that. And if you look at a color wheel, and I'll talk about this in the color tutorial, you can use any of the colors on the outside edges of that color wheel, pick three to four of those, five of those, and put them together, and you will have a beautiful soap. It's going to be bright, it's going to be um, expressive, it's going to be light, it's going to be playful and um, very kid-like, which is what his work was all, all about. It was very freeing. So how do we get off track with that sometimes is that we want to sometimes explore something else. We want to use the visuals of our soap to um, translate the scent that we have in that soap and tell that to our customers. Uh, we want more nuance. We want um, something not as bright. So for all those reasons, all the color tutorials I did may be helpful to you. But if you're bogged down someday and just want to get back to using the colors of a rainbow, that's absolutely fine. And that's what I wanted to do. I haven't done a rainbow soap in such a long time, but I wanted to think of uh, an artist in this series of artist-inspired soaps that I can do um, rainbow colors on. So this is that video, and I'll start off with a color tutorial. So today we're gonna to revisit the color wheel. And basically, while I have this wheel up here, to show you that if you use any of the colors on the outside edge um, and pick three of those, four of those, five of those, you're gonna have a beautiful soap, uh, especially if you can keep the colors clear because one of the things that Kandinsky did was he stuck to those colors. He didn't, he rarely um, made them into pastels. He rarely mixed these colors, so he didn't have muddy colors. So if you stay away from that mud muddiness, in other words, if you stay um, mixing side-by-side -side colors, that would be okay. But if you start mixing colors from across the color wheel, which we talked about before, that's when we're not we're going to get into trouble. But if you want to just pick bright colors, you're going to have a great looking soap. So as I said, if you're going to do something like a mint soap and you want to use purple and red instead of using what people use with uh, that, usually which is green, that's entirely up to you and it will be a beautiful soap. But one of the things we do is we indicate to customers sometimes what the scent is like by the use of the colors that we do, and that's when we get to complications. So let's just take a look at some of the primaries. So a yellow soap all by itself. I made a lot of yellow soap lately, which I hadn't done before. That's um, no problem with making a color scheme out of that because it's all yellow. We call that a monochromatic color scheme. You can make a red and yellow soap. It'll kind of look like uh, colors of McDonald's or Wendy's or something like that. They say that those are the most appetizing advertising colors. Um, you don't let people eat your soap though. And then we have blue. Blue's where we get away from the food making. If you use that in a food seller sign, it's almost certain doom. And then we have green. If you want to use all three of those colors together, however, um, that'd be very nice. It's very cheery. It's one of the cheeriest color schemes that we have. We have green. You could use all four of these colors in a soap. Probably would represent some kind of a bright um, scent. Um, you know, the purple. You can use all those in the color scheme. So kid soap would be great for this. And then orange. I didn't put these in any particular order. If I did, I would have put the green here and the orange there. So this is really the color scheme that Kandinsky worked with a lot. 
And I wanted to do a rainbow soap anyway, so I decided that I wanted to do that in a way that um, other people are not doing as, as much. Um, for example, we've seen a lot of rainbow soaps, and I love rainbow soaps, but I didn't really want to make a classical rainbow soaps and stripes of the rainbow. So I thought, what artists use bright colors? And I came up with Vasily Kandinsky right away. So that's going to be my soap today, but um, you'll see how I used my drawing that I showed you earlier. Let me put that in here. I showed you earlier this um, study of one of his pieces of work, the squares with concentric circles, and I thought that would be great in my slab mold. And so these lines that I put on the paper represent where the bars were going to be cut. So I'd have basically pairs of soaps like that. Thing is, um, it's probably harder to do something like this unless the colors remain very fluid. And anytime you make so many colors, like six colors, uh, I'm planning on doing seven colors, it gets harder to keep those colors liquid all the way through your pouring. So let's see how it goes and let's get on with the soap making. Okay, everything's at about 95 degrees now. So I'm gonna pour in my lye solution. And let's blend all this up. I've already got my kale and clay in there. Get the bubbles out. I just want to bring this to emulsification and get my lime fragrance in there. I really like this lime fragrance. Seems right for spring and summer. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll just get the colors all going. It's a little more complex to put this soap together, but I think we can do it. I have more of that green and orange, but I've got a lot of other colors too. Purple. Red. Like I'm not going to have much for the green, but I do want a little bit of this, so I'll just use a little of my mica there. And I'm going to have to stir that in because otherwise it'll be a bubbly mess. Okay, so let's put that aside. And let me start mixing with my lightest colors first. Let's start mixing with the yellow. And the orange. Red. 
and that's really red. Actually, really red mica from Nurture Soap, too. Okay. Let's bring you to the mold. First thing I want to do is just get this lime green down there. It's hardly going to show up in the soap, but I wanted something to to say visually that this is a lime soap, and this is also going to anchor my dividers. Okay, now I'm going to put every other side divider in there. In other words, there, I have some other dividers that will go in here. And that's because I want to be able to pour these separately. And I want them to look different. I did a drawing that I'm going to show to you in the color tutorial on how I made a little design, a little drawing for this first little concept. But then after I made that, I'm going to decide to, uh, I've decided, oops, there's one soap that I didn't blend. That's my blue. Anyway, I decided that what I would do is have a, the concept really strong in my head and then just go for it because it's really just inspired by Kandinsky but not meant to really copy him So I'm stirring these off camera so that they pour a little better. Give this a little tap down. Tap 
this down again. Tapping it down because I want it to lie flat. That's pretty much what I want. Now I'm just going to go in and put the other partitions in. Now in my Kandinsky photograph of this painting, I noticed that um, there are some lines that contributed to the pattern. So I'm just going to accentuate the circles. And since I'm treating each one of these soaps, treating each one of these bars it's, as its own thing, I'm going to clean up a little bit around each one. Let's um, see if I have a little bit more extra soap that I want to use. If I can get that right in this blue. Let's see if there's any other low spot. And work those in. Okay, let's spray this with some alcohol and then I'll bring it back to the unmolding. We'll see if this experiment 
work. I'm not so sure. Just trying to keep the soap a little more liquid. But anytime you make a lot of colors, it, it's hard to maintain that liquidy soap. Okay, I'll bring you back for the unmolding. I couldn't wait to unmold this. Kandinsky soap. So I'm just walking the silicon mold out of this side by side. If you saw the unmolding of the optical art soap, I had the same issue with working harder to get it out. And that usually means that I could have waited a little longer to get the soap out. If it's real firm, it doesn't want to hold to the edges of the, the wood mold. But it's almost out. Here we go. This part is no problem. It just falls out of that part. There's the lime green bottom. So let's see how these turned out. I kind of like the bottom too. Oh, that's cool. They're not really soft. They were just a little stubborn. Let's turn this over. I really like the edges. Now this one for sure will, it'll be the case that every single bar is gonna look very different. Same colors, but quite different designs. On the sides. I can bevel that little bubble right there. Bevel the bubble. I like that one too. It's really glassy sides with that divider edge. I really like that lime green. And I've always liked lime fragrance, so clean it. It's one of those citruses that really keeps its scent. That looks like an S, my super soap. That's a fun warm weather soap. Kind of feeling that way now that it is warming up, finally. That's cool. Some of these poured a little bit more shallow, so I will keep those. And that really red micas. What do I say? It's really red. I think I'm going to take the side 
dividers out now. That one too. I like that color combo there with the darker green and the lime green. It's just fun to see how differently. They all came out. These will be really extra fun to use too because some of them, well they all have all the colors in them. It's just some of them, the colors are on the inside of the bar. Like this one I know has purple in it, although it didn't show up on the surface. That one just has just a little bit of purple. And here's the last one. It has a cool swirl on it. Okay, so again, I'm going to probably um, link you to some of the other videos where I did this type of pour um, in the slab mold. And uh, just in case you're curious about other ones I've done. And then um, thank you for watching, subscribing, and uh, commenting. A lot of comments on the Optical Art Soap. And uh, we'll see you again real soon. I'm going to do the next um, soap, I think, will be um, the soap where I'm going to try to work with the, the browning lemon curd fragrance and make it work in a design now that I know what it does. And uh, have that edited and, and up uh, a week after this one. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, and I didn't want to forget that I poured the extra soap in these little oval silicone molds. So that's kind of cute. Very colorful. And one that I hardly had any more left of the scrapings. There it is. It's like a little island. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye everybody. choice could be guided by emotional and um, spiritual this is what something <laughs> the thing about Kandinsky is that he felt that your color choices could be guided by forces of uh, your emotional and spiritual thinking and so that should be liberating too because everyone has those I think and you can just kind of say you know I really feel like I want to do blue soap and oh my gosh